This is a tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn to prepare the final accounts, which are balance sheet and income statement using the trial balance from the previous videos. So in 4.3, we had this problem one where we prepared our trial balance. I'm going to use this trial balance to prepare profit and loss account and balance sheet. So I just let me pick another color. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is uh, look at each of the item in the trial balance and then mark it uh, as asset liability income expense and then post it to uh, the correct place in the income statement or the balance sheet. So let's start with share capital. Share capital is a liability and it is going to be posted uh, in the balance sheet. So I have uh, the format of the profit and loss account and the balance sheet with me. So in the balance sheet, I'm going to go to the liability side. So you have uh, equity capital here. So under equity, you have shareholder capital. Shareholder capital and the amount is 150,000. All right. So the first item is done. The share capital has been posted to its respective place in the final accounts. Uh, next up is purchases. Purchase, as we know, is an expense and it has to be shown in the income statement. Again, within the income statement, we can say it will be shown on the debit side. And for liabilities, it can, uh, we already have it. it. It is going to be shown in the liabilities side. Okay. So purchases are going to go to the profit and loss account. So uh, I'm just going to write uh, purchases here. Purchases. And the amount is 40,000. Next up, you have cash in hand. Cash in hand is an asset. This will go to balance sheet under the current assets uh, subhead. Amount is 7000. So maybe somewhere here, I'm going to write cash in hand. And the amount is 7000. Next is cash at bank, same treatment. For uh, 8500, done. Next is uh, electricity. So, electricity here is 4800. This is an expense. This will go to income statement on the debit side. And one more decision that we have to take is whether we are going to treat electricity as the factory electricity and an expense which is relating to manufacturing or an indirect expense relating to sales. So let us assume here and we are making an assumption. It's not clarified in this question because we picked it up from the trial balance uh, discussions. So we're going to treat this as a direct expense 4800 electricity. So I'm going to write it as direct expense. So electricity 4800. Then you have stationary 500. This is an expense income statement debit side. And let me write stationary somewhere here. Stationary 500. Stationary. Okay. Then you have office equipment 2400. This is an asset goes to balance sheet on the asset side under the non-current assets, office equipment 2400. So let me write non-current assets and you have office equipment. The amount is 2400. Next up you have debtors 8000. Debtors are asset in the balance sheet under current assets head. So debtors 8,000, let me write it here, debtors 8,000 and we should also write the heading current assets. 
All right, next is machinery 160,000. This is an asset in the balance sheet, balance sheet under the non current asset 160,000. So 160,000. Uh, this is machinery. Next item is salaries 11,400. This will go to uh, income statement expenses income statement on the debit side salaries 11,400. 11,400. Now we are assuming that these expenses are indirect expenses. Of course, in business, you'll have clarity on which are the expenses you are doing at the factory level, manufacturing level, and what are the you know sale related expenses. Accordingly, you will categorize that. But if you don't have this information, we are just making assumptions and moving forward. So salary, stationary are being treated as an indirect expense. Then you have sales 105 400 sale is an income goes to income statement and credit side 105 400 this is sales next up is creditors 5000 creditors are a liability in the balance sheet under the current liabilities so 5000 creditors and the head is current liabilities then you have rent 2000 this is an expense in the income statement on the debit side 2000 rent 2000 Next up is furniture 16,000. This is an asset in the balance sheet under the non current assets 16,000 furniture 16,000 and furniture under the non current assets. Then you have a bank loan 10,000. So this is a liability under balance sheet non current liability. This is a long term liability. So bank loan is 10,000. Let me write it here. Bank loan. And this is non current liability. Next up is investment 6000. This is an asset in the balance sheet non current asset balance sheet 6000 investment this is the investment made by the company in some other investment avenues 6000 commission 1050 this is an expense since this is on the debit side uh, in the income statement on the debit side so commission on the debit side all expenses have debit balances so if the amount is written in the debit side, we know this is an expense. Commission is 1050. Commission. Then you have stock. This is the stock in the beginning. This is the opening stock 3200. This is this is going to be sold during the year. So this is equivalent to you know the purchase the stock you purchase. You're going to sell it this year. This is the stock left in the last year. So in this year, you are using this stock to you know, sell the goods. So this becomes an expense for you. So we are going to treat this as an expense in the income statement on the debit side, 3200. So let me write opening stock, 3200. Then you have commission uh, received. 1200 this is an income in the income statement on the credit side commission received now commission was earlier given on the debit side now it is given on the credit side so all incomes have credit balances that's how it is being shown on the credit side and you should deduce that this is an income commission received 1200 and you write it here 
commission received 1200 and finally you have postage 750 this is an expense goes to income statement debit side 750 so 750 uh, postage all right so you have now uh, posted all the items from the trial balance each and every item has been brought to profit and loss account or to the balance sheet one thing to notice is that from the trial balance uh, each item goes to you know one specific statement on one specific side so all the items in the trial balance are uh, can be can fall under assets liability income and expenses and these four categories are exclusive exclusive meaning uh, a given item debtors will either be an asset or a liability or an income or an expense it cannot be income and expense both or income and asset both so these are mutually exclusive uh, categories and whenever you have an asset uh, it goes to balance sheet whenever you have a liability it goes to balance sheet any income or expenses they go to uh, income statement and income statement so therefore uh, any any account balance from the trial balance is either going to go to balance sheet or going to go to the income statement again all assets are shown on the asset side all liabilities on the liability side so one of the two sides incomes are shown on the credit side expenses are shown on the debit side so you know just to as a rule of thumb you should note that whenever you are preparing final accounts uh, each item is going to go to only one place that takes care of the other issues involved in the double entry system as well all right so the next thing to do is to figure out what is the profit earned during the year so i'm going to sum this side up 105 4000 105 and 4000 and we have a balancing figure here which is called gross profit this gross profit carried down is the balancing figure balancing figure this means that you had a sales of 105 4000 and now you have a bunch of uh, uh, expenses here uh, the cost of the stock which was with you from the last year plus you purchased more stock all of this has been sold during the year and there are expenses on electricity so after you deduct the total of this from 105 4000 you have a profit of 57,400. So this is the gross profit. This is the margin that you have. The margin is equal to sales minus the cost of the goods which are being sold. So the cost of the goods is equal to this 40,000 plus 48,000 plus 3,200. Now this gross profit is brought forward. Gross profit, uh, profit brought down. 57,400. What does it mean is now you have the gross margin. After taking care of the cost of the goods which are being sold, you have additional 57,400 with you. Out of this money, you can spend on whatever the whatever uh, expenses you want to do, uh, you know, administrative expenses, sales expenses, finance uh, cost, etc. And then you will have your net profit. So here you have gross profit, but you also made some commission. So this uh, comes out to be 58,600 total uh, money that you have. This includes the gross margin plus the commission that you make. And now you have to figure out the net profit during the year. So you just sum up, uh, you figure out the total of this side and take it out of 58,600. This gives you a balancing figure, which is called net profit net profit carry down this is a balancing figure so when you do the calculations the number comes out to be 42,900 this is the balancing figure all right so this net profit is now taken to the balance sheet if you remember from the very very initial videos where we discussed uh, the relationship between asset liability incomes and expenses we said that the profit uh, you know is is fed back into the shareholders funds the shareholders the investors uh, in the business have the right over this uh, net profit they can decide to reinvest it as well 
So this money is going to be transferred to the shareholders funds, the reserves and surpluses of the shareholder. Let me now go to the balance sheet and in the balance sheet I am going to write reserves and surplus. In the textbooks you will also see that uh, this amount is added to the share capital uh, and the share capital is increased. That is one way of doing it. But in case of company form of business you will see that there is a separate head called reserve and surpluses. That is where this amount is shown. So there you go. This was one mis missing uh, uh, piece in the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, we need to have this amount of profit or loss during the year. Uh, so, uh, you know, the balance sheet preparation depends upon the income statement preparation. Therefore, we start with income statement and then we go to balance sheet. So now all you have to do is to uh, come up with the total. Now, my format is in place, equity, non-current and current, everything is fine. The total of the balance sheet comes out to be 2 lakhs 7900 on the both on both the sides yeah so balance sheet is uh, uh, equal the assets are equal to liabilities the accounting equation uh, holds as well so in this video uh, just to summarize uh, we looked at a trial balance the trial balance was prepared during the discussions on trial balance in the, in the previous videos. This was one of the practice problems. Using those numbers, we prepared uh, income statement and we prepared balance sheet. Key learnings are that from the trial balance, each account balance is going to go to one of the two statements and one of the two sides. Uh, the profit uh, from the uh, income statement uh, you know, has two parts. There is a gross profit, there is a net profit. The net profit is carried to the balance sheet and put in the reserves and surpluses. We follow the format which is prescribed uh, to prepare the balance sheet in terms of uh, having non-current and current uh, nature of items and uh, you know we're done with that. So that's how you prepare the balance sheet and income statement using a trial balance. I'll see you in the next video.